you know that vision problems are often hidden disabilities? Even if your child can see 2020, doesn't mean they have perfect vision. Many kids suffer from a learning related vision problem known as convergence insufficiency. And here to tell us more about it is Dr. Carl Hillier. He's the director of the San Diego Center for Vision Care. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, Greg. Thanks for having me. So you're saying even if a child has 20-20 vision, which, you know, I think that's what most of us think. Oh, you have 20-20 vision. Doesn't mean they have perfect eyesight and they could still have problems learning. That's absolutely right. Uh, you know, having 20-20 eyesight is no indication that everything's well. It's like having 98.6 temperature and being quite sick. So 2020 eyesight is really, being perfect vision is a myth, and we need to look at that more deeply because children with 2020 eyesight often have visual issues that interfere with learning. Uh, most of what we learn in the classroom occurs visually. We're visual beings. Most of our brain is dedicated to vision, and it's not just seeing small things far away. It's actually scanning and converging and focusing on written material that enables us to learn. Speaking of converging, talk about convergence insufficiency and explain to people who may not know what that is. Well, convergence insufficiency is the inability for the eyes to turn inward in an efficient manner to then have both eyes point at the book that you're reading from or math homework that you're doing or anything like that. And one of the symptoms of not being able to turn your eyes in and sustain that in an efficient way is the behavior of... Uh, taking a long time to get your homework done, for example, the homework wars that a lot of parents have to deal with, or inattention or poor endurance, uh, physical symptoms such as headaches, blurred vision, double vision. And uh, a, a quick test for that. Let me show you one little quick thing here, Greg. This is a simple test for convergence insufficiency that okay. needs to be done as routinely <clears throat> as checking for distance 2020. And so if you were to look at that little bird right there, and I'll just slowly approach okay. this. And I'm watching your eyes come in, and you're doing quite well. And that's, that's great. Now, a lot of kids, right about here, they start to furrow their brow. They start to have difficulty focusing. They avoid the situation. Mm -hmm. And that might be indicative of convergence insufficiency. Interesting. And you yeah. have another example, too, that we were, yeah, you were is, showing me earlier. This is a, a situation that you can't, you can't see. It's, it's, the eyes are actually stuttering okay. when they're trying to read. And, and hold that up, yeah, for that camera. So this is what it looks like normally for a normal uh, print. And that looks just how we would all see print. Now, for children with learning difficulties with that are secondary to visual issues, mm -hmm. such as tracking, it's going to look something like this. And this is very devastating. Wow. Uh, and when somebody tries to read something like this, it's pretty difficult to, re regardless of how intelligent you are or how well you can decode written mm -hmm. language, if your eye movements aren't sufficient, then w this is what it's going to look like to you. And, and, you know, so tough for the kid at, you know, at a critical time when, you know, they're trying to learn, they're in whatever, third, fourth, fifth grade, oh, yeah. and they need to pick up on, you know, the, the, the three R's, right, right. and they're not getting reading at all. No, they're not. And it's, this is a joyous time of the season for most of us. And, uh, but for kids that have learning disabilities and uh, children that have visual issues that are really misunderstood, or they might be misdiagnosed as having dyslexia or ADHD, when in fact they might have an underlying visual problem, it's pretty hard for them. And, it, and it's yeah. often misdiagnosed, you say, by, by say, the teachers in school or, or right. school administrators, but optometrists, if you take your kid to an optometrist, they know exactly what's going on. They're going to test for it. Well, that's right. That's why the California Optometric Association is dedicated to having parents understand this critical relationship between vision and learning, and it has to do with near-point testing. And if you don't do that near point testing, you don't know whether or not a child's truly prepared to learn. How common is this? Well, in those in special ed, it's over 50%. Wow. Those that, children that struggle that aren't performing to their potential, it can be upwards to 20%. Wow. Yeah. So some of those kids shouldn't be in, in special ed. They should, they should be tested. Is, is well, they need to be tested visually. To That's right. They need to be tested from the, from the eyes all the way back into the brain. That is visual motility. Mm -hmm. That is eye movement control, focusing and convergence, then visual perception, and then visual information processing. And the warning signs for parents? What do parents need to look out for? The warning signs are your children's behavior because the visual system is mute. The visual system can't speak <clears throat> for you. So they avoid schoolwork, for example. They take too long to do their homework physical symptoms like headaches and eye pain, uh, they're sitting too close to the television, uh, they squint to see in the distance, they avoid homework. These and are the, and, and yeah. poor hand-eye coordination, so if they're not maybe good with sports, is that, is that an indication potentially well, to? Absolutely, because the visual system guides the intelligent movement of the body. 
Okay. And if the eyes can't do that very well, then it looks as though that child's clumsy or inefficient with their, their, their muscles and their motor skills. So it's important to have near point vision testing. That's the key. Okay. Yeah, All right. Can, let me show you one quick thing here, Greg, because this might be interesting to you. Okay. If really you quickly. Yeah, if you look at this, time. and this is the behavior. If you look at Greg, and Greg, we'll just watch this and okay. see what happens when you look through here. Do you notice anything shifting? Um, no, not exactly. Yeah. Oh, you mean? Kind of a shift in your focus or a, a movement that's occurring? You mean from the right eye to the left eye? Yeah. Uh-huh, sure. Yeah. And that shift makes it difficult for you to understand what you're looking at. Gotcha. Yeah. And that's what happens to a lot of these kids. A lot of kids, they, they look at it, but they're not gaining information from it. Yeah. All right. Dr. Carl Hillier with the uh, San Diego Center for Vision Care. Thank you so much for coming in today. Some you're great welcome. information for a lot of parents. You're welcome. Kids. You're welcome.